Hi, and welcome to a slightly lower in numbers than last week's Three Legs Four Wheels F1 podcast. It's Paul here with... Sean. Kieran. Lee. And... Oh, no, that's it. No. <laughs> Just... There'll probably be a cat at some point. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. Just the four of us this week. Um, thanks again to the guys from Everything F1. That was a really fun show to do last mm-hmm. week. They were nice people. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, they definitely were. And we'll have to do one again later on this season, I reckon. Yes, probably fewer cream mm-hmm. eggs during that one. Or make them slightly more aerodynamic. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it is finally race week. Testing is done. Mm. Um, Everything is starting a day earlier than you'd expect. Don't forget the Grand Prix is on Saturday this week and next week. (laughs) Although, if you believe one of my colleagues, who is a bit of a law unto himself, um, I was in work at the weekend and I got a phone call from one of my colleagues, very distressed that I was in work at the weekend because he thought I was going to miss the first F1 race of the season. He was king. (laughs) So, (laughs) so, no, I'm not not staying there for a whole week. So, no, it hasn't started. It was not the weekend just passed. Yeah, that would have been slightly bad planning. (laughs) Mm. I'm I'm here for Saturday races. I, I, I think I'd much prefer that to Sunday. Um, yeah, but that means we'd end up with Friday sprints and you'd have to Take time off. Oh, you don't work anyway, do you? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I got two minutes into the podcast. <laughs> work, work, Look, some, work, some people lot, on this podcast actually. spend two careers. <laughs> um, no, That's I, usually I, not. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's only because I take my, take my son to rugby on Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> he, I like the fact that they've sorted me out for the first two races. <laughs> I. I'd take more Saturday races because you get your Sunday back. Mm. And Friday, I, I I mean, I have a job, but do I work Friday? Work, really? <laughs> work? <laughs> Our company, my new company has a, a process called No Meetings on Friday, and it's bliss. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Ours has a policy called No Meetings. <laughs> no, it's Friday. <laughs> yeah. No Meetings, question mark, no, comma, Friday! <laughs> Exclamation <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's gonna be. It's, oh. Right, uh, is that us? That that is us. That is a that is, is a, that lo- a shit cable. That is a loose shitty cable. Right. Note to self: do not, do not touch that cable. Do not move. <laughs> oh God! All this new technology now it's a piece of wire that's stopping mm-hmm. us. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting watching a, watching a race on a Saturday and having a entire Sunday free. I'm just gutted I'm going to miss qualifying because I think it's around about four o'clock. Friday afternoon. It is four o'clock. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, hell, double fail. I've got a doctor's appointment right there. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, my God. God, I'm going to have to... I'm, uh, for, I think for the first time ever, I'm going to have to try and skip out on work to watch an F2 race. No <laughs> life come to. Yeah, because, of course, the F2, there's going to be the F2 race uh, on uh, yeah, Friday. Yeah, that'll be Friday, won't it? Friday, and then uh, one on Saturday. Bloody hell. Yeah. They're not, they're not I mean, ma- interested in F2 this year just to see if that... Um, Mercedes lad like rips it apart like everyone yeah. thinks mm. he's going to Kimmy Kimmy Antonelli. Yeah, that's it. Or Kimmy's Auntie Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ten past two on on Friday the first race. Oh, I didn't deliberately like book this week off work with this in mind, but I am not sad that this is how it's worked out. Yeah, you've done well. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, and we're not allowed to work from home on Fridays. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's that's unfair. Yeah, I'll be do, I'll be doing I'll be doing lots of recording and what, watching everything when I get home. <laughs> when we used to do the old five days a week in the office, I used to bring me and my my mate, my colleague Dave. Um, we used to sit together in the absolute corner of the entire building, like you couldn't be further away from another human. And I'd get my iPad out and put it on its little stand. And we'd have the practice on for Monza or whatever it was. But we'd sell a tape, a list of jobs that we have to get through on a little flap over it. So when the boss came over, we just lift over the flap and went, oh, yeah, C12861, we need to do that by the end of the day. Yeah, sure, yeah. All right, Pete. Yeah, good. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think I'll be... Oh, t- Ericsson's I'll, flipped it. I'll be, ta- yeah. I'll be taking a tablet into work on uh, on Friday with me to, uh, to watch what I can. Um, mm. So... How much of um, pre-season testing did we uh, did we get to see? I have seen nothing except for gifs on Twitter of curbs coming loose. Mm. That's all I know. I saw a lot of it. I had it on next to me for most of the days. 
Yeah, I, I saw a bit. I, I saw like a roundup as well for each sort of day of it too. Mm. Um, I I don't know about you, but it feels even um, like it feels even more muddy than usual trying to like work out what's going on. Yeah, because it's sort of it's similar, but it's not. Um, it's it's wait. like you know we know the headline that Red Bull are probably going to walk away with it, but who's second to fifth is sort of a bit up in the air, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it could be, um, you know, Aston could get a strong start to the season again. McLaren could be up there with a better start to this year than they had to last year. Mercedes, yeah. obviously, you can't get Did you out. see the interview with Lando when he was asked about what, what, what the car was like on day three? No, I missed that. No. The interview interview with Lando, you might as well have stuck him in, a Hass, in Hass overalls. He was so down on what he thought the car was capable of. Oh, wow. Week. Yeah, it was really, really quite strange. Like, unless he's just turned into like a master poker player over the, over the winter. Sandbagging in interviews. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. He's he's quite downbeat quite often though, isn't he? There's a. I don't know how much of Drive to Survive you've seen yet. Um, no. No one is. Is it good? It's better than the last couple of years. We've seen four of them. So to be honest, we're not. Yeah, I can't give the full measure of it, but the first couple have been better than the last couple of years because mm, it got exactly. slammed don't... last year, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we universal. finished last year's. No, I think uh, we I think I, we still I got think, five or last year's to I go. think we got as far as the land, not the Lando, the Alonso episode, mm. and I decided, well, this has clearly peaked, and uh, <laughs> gave up. <laughs> I, I think it took me two good goes with like a big break in the middle before I finished watching. It was like I st- I watched a few episodes of it, fell off somewhere, and like the, I, I had a day off or something, and I, I couldn't find something to do. So I was like, oh, I'll just I'll finish watching this. Mm. Um, the the McLaren episode this year is good. Um, it's a bit made in Chelsea, you know, where they they're at a golf course and you know they're going, oh, this is a really candid conversation. Apart from the three cameras, the two boom poles, the sound <laughs> bloke next to him going, can you repeat that, Zach? We didn't get crisp enough Fs on that. Is it like when they ca- when they accidentally caught uh, um, Toto Wolf giving George Russell the Mercedes behind some tyres? Like, oh, yeah. What, what a surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who saw that coming? Um, there, there's one good bit where I think it's in the first episode, admittedly, so if you you know listen, if you haven't seen any of it, then close your ears now or skip to four twenty seconds. But uh, Lance Stroll does his wrists in, doesn't he, at the start of the mm-hmm. season? They improved. But there's a bit where he turns up at the grid on the Friday of practice for Bahrain, and Land, it's Lando and Science and Piastri are chained to him, and Lando goes, "You're right, yeah, yeah. Can you wank yet?" <laughs> <laughs> but, there's a McLaren PR guy who sort of leans in, nudges Lando, and goes, mm, points upwards to the boom mic, <laughs> and he goes, yeah, so can you wank? <laughs> <laughs> and sort of Carlos going, oh, I don't know what you mean by the wank. <laughs> <laughs> Flawless impression. Oh, <laughs> may, yeah, may, have to, uh, may have to watch it just, just for that. And, of course, it's going to be the... Uh, as far as we know, the last series with Gunter. Mm, unless yeah. he reappears. Well, he's doing com- I'm, I'm he's doing sure... commentary for RTL this season. Fantastic. I think I'm the only person in the fucking world that doesn't give a fuck about Gunter Steiner. <laughs> <laughs> I... I, I don't give a fuck smash about him. You, you, would you fuck smash his door? <laughs> we back to the patron. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd how, do you, how, do you, how do you rate his neck? Um, pro- probably like wrinkly. <laughs> I don't want to point the finger at why he got sacked, but in the, the or, I, don't, I don't know if there's a second one, but in the first Hass episode of um, Drive to Survive, it's mainly him touring the Waterstones of the UK signing his book. Excellent. Mm. It's you know generally think... not a good sign. He's on Sunday brunch with Enter Shikari and was going, well, this is Drive to Survive, what's going on? <laughs> Do you know what I think is funny is like when Ron Dennis was in McLaren and McLaren clearly made some bad decisions and was going the wrong way. And I would and I would he... translate that into Ron speak, but I really can't be asked. <laughs> <laughs> but he 
like so so he was he was stepped away and we got Whitmarsh then like Whitmarsh didn't do too well so so he was replaced and everyone sort of understood why and then we've had Ferrari uh, Ferrari guys come and go and they haven't done the right job uh Cyril Abitabul at Renault like nobody was really surprised when um when when he was gone um Claire Williams at Williams nobody was surprised when she went yet yeah, Gunther Steiner does let's be perfectly honest not uh, like not managing like the fastest team in Formula One but then he gets gone that is how could Gene has possibly do this <laughs> possibly possibly because he has more personality than all of those other team principals you mentioned put together. Do you know how many tens? Do you know how many And you you can throw Otmar into that list as well. (laughs) Do you know how many tenths personality gives you? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, Gene Gene has to said that he's not spending money on the car because the profits are up. Look at all those championships (laughs) Rubens Barrichello's got. (laughs) (laughs) He'd be a four-time world champion if uh, both Jensen Button and Michael Schumacher didn't exist, but they did. <laughs> so, no championships for you, Rubens. It's like My that grandma time... will she be a bicycle? <laughs> it's like that time somebody asked Andy Murray if he'd have won more titles if uh, Nadal, Djokovic, and Federer weren't around. <laughs> He was still lost one to Vavrinka or something, you know. <laughs> it's Andy Murray. Second, second place in the choking contest. <laughs> Yeah, he, I I do I do care about Gunter leaving because I like him. You know, it's it doesn't make a difference on the sport, and I know it's probably a bit pop culture. You know, I I, I just I just happen to like him the same way that I quite like James Blunt, but I'd never buy an album of his. You know, it's... no, you don't like James Blunt. You like his tweets. Well, so this is what I mean. I I like the equivalent of James Blunt's tweets, but it's Gunter Steiner. Right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's the thing. I think it's you know it's that's what I like about him. Um, I think, whereas I, Gene Haas, there's nothing I like about him. I think it. I think it's because Haas are just so drab. Every, there's no every, reason every, for them. Everything about yeah. them is drab. You know, they even put they put the stars and stripes on the car. And you watch any other American sport, and the stars and stripes is there, and it's bright, and it's in your face, and it's huge, mm. and on the Haas, mm. it's gray yeah <laughs> yes. it, it is weird that 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 team how it exists and why it exists is strange because I, I always think back to excuse me i was thinking back to minardi when it comes to like back market teams and like you think back then like a minardi had come out and there'd be something on it you know there'd be something interesting you know were, were they the was it minardi the first car that came out with the x-wings before they were banned uh no that was terrible i was it terrible mm. was it uh, well, to, well, to be perfectly honest, Tyrrell at that they, time as well. They were as much of a backmarker team as Minardi. They were yeah. both. They were both fighting for twentieth. Yeah, yeah. You can give 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 them the same the same badge, but like there was, there there was like this underdog feeling about it where you, you knew that just as much hard work was going on in those teams as there was in the top teams that were winning, if not more, because it was the little resources they have, and I I don't mean like the people that work inside Haas, as in like the day-to-day operations aren't working hard, but the infrastructure there to give them the tools to actually do their job well and progress, like, well, essentially Gene Haas and his pen and his checkbook, but uh, Mm. like they're not putting their bet in. And it just means like, why, why would, why do you, why would anybody care about Haas? Who, who's bought Haas merchandise? And like, why do you hate yourself? <laughs> well, the only thing and I just, I just want to it? say, I just want to mention um, the FC Motorsports sponsored <clears throat> interface that we're using. Um, thanks to Stephen Faber for all these donations and all that Hass merchandise that he's bought as well. <laughs> <laughs> Happy do, now, Steve. Do you know what? Do you know what? Somewhere in the world, you can buy like a Formula One mystery box. Every single one has a Haas T-shirt in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. The official T-shirt of Esteban Gutierrez. <laughs> I'd forgotten he was there. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing. I think I said this last week or week before. There's nothing marketable about Haas. They've got rid of one thing which was marketable. And if you're being kind, Nico Hulkenberg's quite lovely. But apart from that... What is going for Haas? They Absolutely are they are purely no. there to 
promote CNC machines. Mm. <laughs> See, that's not a sexy thing, is it? Not yeah. really. <laughs> you know, and it's 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 not the CNC that makes you go, hmm. Nineties dance music joke there. Almighty. <laughs> Oh. Can continue with this thought. Jesus. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Lord, for blaspheming you with that. <laughs> if you're up there. Um, but yeah, they, they purely exist to promote um, the Hass automation business. Hmm. And I mean, you know, money to money that goes towards a racing team in a big way seems to go to the um, Stuart Hass NASCAR team. Which actually has been successful and has won things. Yeah. But the thing is, they were, they're in a sport where uh, parity is more common and where you don't have to invest too much to win things. And that's, I don't want to besmirch, you know, NASCAR necessarily that massively because I, I read there was a very exciting vision. I saw the clip of the exciting vision of NASCAR last night. It looked all very cool. But I don't think you have to go as far in F1 as you do those sorts of things. If you're already an established name out there, you really don't have to. But F, that's not what F1 is. If Gene has to come to F1 expecting he's going to have the same success as he's had in, or, you know, the company, the separate wing of it, has had in American motorsports, that's just not how it works. Yeah, because, I mean, F- F1, you have to think the money and the expertise and the people into it mm-hmm. but mainly the money mm-hmm. i don't i think the thing is though the i don't think he expects to do well that's the problem no i don't think he does or if he does then he's snooker loopy because yeah. it's not going to happen are, are they are they taking up are they taking up grid spots that could be better used by by Andretti? Andretti. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean basi- basically, Andretti, Penske, anyone. Basically, they are the team equivalent of Latifi. Mm. Yeah, I don't think there's a single Formula E team which has less ambition than Haas does in Formula One, and they're in Formula E. <laughs> oh, I don't I know. I don't know. I don't know. They keep various ones of them keep signing Dick Tantrum. <laughs> that's uh, not ambition that's someone who likes a sitcom <laughs> I'm going to pretend I'm not hearing that <laughs> sorry look he, I, there's there's a quality to Dick Tantrum Dan Tictum, which is purely comedic and he's and what helps is that he's not one of the best drivers in Formula E if he was one of the best drivers in Formula E it would all of a sudden become serious that's him being like the 17th best it's quite funny Clearly, that's like that catfish episode. Britain's... The catfish episode with the hottest guy in Maine. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but it's clearly one of Britain's best combat fighters has accidentally found himself <laughs> in motorsport. <laughs> the lost world champion of his weight class, <laughs> and we know about his weight because he went through a phase last year where he did all his interviews topless. <laughs> Do you like that? I, I didn't. I don't. Yeah. Okay. No. No. I, do, do cool. you know I like. Do you know what? Do you know what I like about it? I, I, I like about what? Sorry. What? Well, yeah. I do like about it, but I'm trying to say, trying to say it differently. Um, <laughs> what I don't like about this is is that when when everyone decided they hated um, t- <laughs> Tickton, the uh, the funny thing I thought was that that was at the same time everyone was saying drivers don't have personalities. I like you go mm. if if in this situation you'd have hated James Hunt this time round. Well, no, that's that's the thing you see because James Hunt had the talent to back everything up. Dan Dan Tickton. Oh no, let's not pretend Dan Tickton was slow. I mean, he had to take the, if 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 he hadn't have had to take that year out, I think he'd have been he'd have been in Formula One. At some oh, point. I mean, he was he was incredibly quick when he was um, racing yeah. w- racing round past all the pack to run into the guy that he'd just had a coming together with. He was the he was the fastest guy under that safety car. No, but he. he, I, was, I, he... I don't hate him. I I pity him. Sounds like it. Yeah, I'm a bit more <laughs> on the pity side. I, yeah. I I don't I don't dislike him. I find it funny when misfortune rocks up at his door. <laughs> I, I tell you what, what, I do find in 2024 is the fact that we've dedicated like 20 minutes to Dan Tickton. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he, he, I think he'd appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he did. I'm sure he would, and I think he'd appreciate me. 
I'm now, going to make it 2024's ambition to get some sort of video message saying hi to you, Lee, from Dan Tickton. I'm We're sure you can do it on Cameo. I would almost guarantee <laughs> oh, yeah, you get a Tickton yeah. Cameo. Uh, Dan Tickton Cameo. <laughs> he's a, he's probably a, about 400 quid. He's a regular Twitch streamer. Yeah. So you might be you might be able, might be able to get him on that. I might have to pretend you've got some sort of illness, but I hope that's all right, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, bear, bearing in mind the um, the other gubbins he comes out with, I don't think you'll have to pretend too hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought you meant Dan Tickton for a second. Oh, I meant Lee. <laughs> <laughs> but if the cap fits. <laughs> It probably wouldn't even be recorded properly, would it? It'd be like it. It, it would have started recording. Like, I'm trying to read. I going. Um, is this? Is this? Do you say it cerebral or cerebral? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna say thick. <laughs> With two C's. <laughs> Go on, plug for Patreon. Yep. If you want to know what if you want to know what that means, go to patreon.com slash three legs small wheels. <laughs> and your life will never be the same. Um what were we saying? We were, Hass? Right, we I were can't talk- remember how we got onto this. Hass are gonna absolutely suck this year. Um yep. Drive to Survive Next is up. slightly an improvement. Next thing I want to talk about is um V Crabs or Carbo team mm-hmm. or racing Tory or whatever. Racing, we're, we're going with RB. We mm-hmm. just we just go RB. Oh, can, we, can, I, can, I, can we call them Team Crabs? I, Maybe. I, Is this the artist I formerly known V-Car. as Toro Rosso? I yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if they're using last year's Red Bull, mm-hmm. hmm. what do we think they are going to be like? Oh. It, apparently it's not quite last year's Red Bull though, is it? Apparently there's quite a lot of stuff that's different on it. I was watching uh, Scarbs talk to Peter Windsor on YouTube about hmm. it. Um, I can't remember the details, but I know he said, <laughs> I know he said it's not quite a like a we you've hmm. got last year's car sort of thing. Um, and they don't like it, it. It it doesn't look like they've just come in and like they're going to be. Right, right up there. They might be. T- I think top of the, top of the back of the midfield. Yeah, if that makes sense. Sixth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Better yeah. than Alpine. Better than Williams. Better than Sauber. A right good car mm. for um, Daniel Ricciardo to put himself back in the shop window. Mm-hmm. I think. I think that's what they need. I mean, last year, last year's car, we didn't get to find out how good it was until. He broke his hand. Well, he's, until he's, Liam Lawson was yeah. in it. Really. Yeah. Yeah, and then we found out, oh, that car is actually capable of scoring points. Um, yeah. I'd forgot about Liam Lawson, and mm. now I've just realised how fucking ridiculous is he, he's, he's not on the grid. Yes, Carry he's on. he's been sharing that opinion this week as well. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he says it on Drive to Survive. I've not got to that episode yet, but I've read the quote of, I beat Yuki Sonoda and he got the drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so luck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have, you know, we need to see Liam Lawson in, a, in an F1 mm. car um, within the next, I'll say within the next 12 months, because you, nev- you never know with the Red Bull organisation um, who is going to have a job there from week to week. Attempt at a segue that I'm now going to censor. <laughs> Help me here, because... <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. How did, how did you know? on the button. <laughs> <laughs> um, help me here because I can't remember the human uh, pop um, Funko Pop's name. That was Nick in DeVries. The re- yes. Um, <laughs> the... <laughs> sometimes, sometimes Nick DeVries. I know, I know what it... language he speaks. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I like speak Lee. <laughs> You, you think you, you've been around the local radio station quite often when people do phone in shows, haven't you? So you're used to Manx nutters. Sometimes you do have to kind of fill in the blanks a bit. <laughs> um, do you think he kind of messed it up for Lawson because they they took a chance with Devries on like that one outing he had? And gone, oh, gee, he, he looks pretty good. Mm. Um, and it was. Like one of the worst Red Bull hires that's 
probably ever happened. And like I remember Valentino Liuzzi. Um, <laughs> if I wonder yeah. if if that hadn't have happened, I wonder if they'd have been like more ready to to just like roll the dice on uh, Lawson. I think if that hadn't happened, we might be looking at Liam Lawson or Daniel Ricciardo in the uh, 2025 seat. Yeah. I think Yuki Tsunoda is very lucky that Nick DeFries bombed. Mm. Yes. Um, I mean, Nick, uh, Yuki Tsunoda, when he got when he got rehired, said, he, like, in an interview, said, I'm I'm really I'm as surprised as you are. Mm. Yeah. Liam Lawson, who actually finished above two drivers in 20th place in a 20-driver championship. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> He's he's good, Liam Lawson, but mm-hmm. we'll we'll have to wait and see what he does with a full year. I'm I'm guessing he's going to get it next year. I don't know. We're we're saying goodbye to Perez at the end of the year, aren't we? I think it has been rumored, hasn't it, that mm. Lawson is pretty much a done deal for next year. Yeah. It's even if it's going to be in, it's going to be in what car though? That's the yeah. that that's yeah. the thing because, um, I mean, what is it? There's Thirteen drivers out of contract at the end of this season. Wow, it's what that I mean. That's the thing. Thirty drivers out of contract. Not all of them are going to stay in Formula mm. One. And one of the seven in contract skipped teams. That is mm. true. That yeah. is true. Mm. Oh, uh, Lewis. That's the yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. And technically, Albon's in contract next year, but you know, fling enough money over to any team. Well, Williams, you can mm. get him. Alonso's, Alonso's got a deal for next year, but he's um, talking about negotiations already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who That's very Alonso, though, isn't it? <laughs> I, I feel like Alonso's contract, he's now got to the point where he, like, he's so good at, uh, at, at arranging a contract for himself <laughs> that before you know it, whoever his team boss is looks at the piece of paper and it's just the team name at the top and signed by both parties and then like TBC written <laughs> in the middle of the page. Is it not still Flavio <laughs> that does his contracts? Wouldn't, su- would... wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> so it's t- wait. TBC oh. written in the middle of the page in disappearing ink. <laughs> oh my word, there was an M. Um, I, was, I was for anyone like that watches uh, like some, some conspiracy stuff on YouTube. Don't well, worry, this is going to come back around to Formula One. That's what uh, he wants you to watch. There's one, there's this a program called the Y Files. It's fucking amazing. The, guy oh, the, puts like, the fish is cool. The fish, yeah, is, yeah, the yeah. fish on that is cool as hell. So they did. He did one um, the other day, and they had like an Italian f- uh, physicist called like something like Flavio Brionelli, and <laughs> but he hit the wrong picture, and the picture is Flavio Brionelli. <laughs> 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 Probably so improve this bloke's life. I do. It was hilarious. <laughs> oh, sorry, is, he's still Alonso's manager, isn't he, mm-hmm. Brutori? Mm. Yeah, I think. I'm yeah, going to wake up you. one morning in November, look at BBC News on my phone, and go, "Oh fuck now, Alonso won Florida." Mm. <laughs> <laughs> do you know the um, uh, Mark Webber said when Flavio was like was sort of pushed out of Formula One. Mm. And it because it was all up in the air, wasn't it? Whether he could continue to manage people while not being sort of in the paddock in, yeah. in Formula One. Mm. And Mark Webber turned around and said, Oh, well, I'll just manage myself because Flavio is the only trustworthy person in the paddock. This doesn't is... say much for the paddock, does it? <laughs> this is. Briatore was convicted on multiple counts of fraud in the 1980s, receiving two prison sentences. I and, mean, like, and, look, and, I, and set... I'm just, I don't consider tax evasion a crime. Because... And, <laughs> and set up a number of successful Benetton franchi- franchises as a fugitive in the Virgin Islands. <laughs> look, <laughs> one, one sentence married the other there. You have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> That was immediate payoff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I liked him, and in his, and he, even when he was in his speedos, uh, <laughs> he's got to be the world's sexiest, least sexy man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so uh, sorry, he must be the world's most sexually available, least sexy man. <laughs> And yes, I am putting myself into that category. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
not available. So sorry, lads. Consider consider myself a participant. (laughs) (laughs) Come second to Flavio (laughs) Briatore. No. Oh Oh, god, it's that Um, it's that bad. It's broken the microphone. The cable has shat itself in excitement here. Oh dear. Uh, Right, we've got a field leak. Fucking hell! (laughs) What are we doing? Okay, maybe I'm not the only competitor again, apart from Flavio Briatore in that category. I'll be ordering so, some new mic cables this week. Yeah. My word. I, 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 thought, I thought Kieran had panicked and decided to strip. It's like, it's a fucking audio, it's an audio podcast. This isn't helping. Being held back by these cumbersome robes. <laughs> Says the guy who was monitoring a conspiracy theory chat whilst naked in bed the other night. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> nothing. Nothing about that sentence is is anything but facts. <laughs> um, um, so, so we, yeah, Al, Alpine are going to be shit this year. Al, Alpine well done, are bland. <laughs> mm-hmm. Has bland. I think that's it. I think Alpine have just not really done enough to merit an opinion about them. No, uh, mm. I did enjoy the fact that they changed the nose cone. They put like that. They tried it with like the paint on and off the <laughs> nose cone. It's like, what's what's the upgrade? And they just peel a sticker off. Like, try <laughs> try yeah. that. Right, Autosport have done um, a sort of ranking of how well yeah. the teams performed in testing, mm-hmm. and Alpina plum last. Oh really? Fair. Yeah. Wow. I think in the race they were second to last. Yeah. Um so they are proper properly crap. Yeah, it it looks like it. Um described as having Williams like pace propensity. Ooh. I mean they're being beaten by a team trying to market CNC machines with two old timers. Mm-hmm. It's not that, a good look. I've said it I said it uh when Alonso left. And I'll say it again: If you have a Formula One team, much like Haas, um, in this in this regard, and you have Esteban Ocon, and you bring in Pierre Gasly, that is a lack of ambition in your driver <laughs> buying. <laughs> they are just going to spend the year just crashing into each other, aren't they? Yeah. I, oh yeah. I think by the end of the year, Renault will announce their departure from Formula One again, and it's going to be Team Deadpool Racing. I Excellent. agree, but mm. I think it'll be halfway through next year. I think they'll have a crap year this year, not improve next year, because no one's going to do up their cars next year because of 2026. Mm-hmm. And then they'll go, nah, don't fancy this. Yeah, Ryan, I... it's yours. Chuck yeah. the keys. You know, Call it Wrexham, FC, Avian, Aviation, Gin, Mint, it... Mobile. Deadpool. Does it not make sense, given the... Um... Like the, the the people that clump together to f- for some reason buy into Alpine, um, does it not make sense that maybe they buy it that they buy the rest out, and then Andretti would buy their way into that, given there's an or- already an American connection and quite a marketable American connection. It would make sense, which yeah. in F one parlance means it probably won't happen. No, yeah, it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I I think it's going to be the, the first fully celebrity owned and backed F one team, and you know they'll have a guest team principal at every race. You know it'll be, it'll be the Rock in Miami and um... <laughs> guest team principal at every race. You mean Ferrari? <laughs> 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 you know you said you weren't going to use those anymore yeah sorry that's, that's strike two strike two <laughs> to be fair that was fully warranted <laughs> um yeah I, I don't know i i don't i they lack ambition yes i think their drivers are fine i don't think there's anything too wrong with them apart from they hate each other do you know what they are are, 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 you, are you talking fine as in when you go out for a meal and let's face it it's completely and utterly under average yeah they're a fantastic corma and then and then <laughs> and then the waiter comes up and says how was your meal and says, oh fine fine oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. that kind of fine i'll yeah. tell you what type of fine uh they are uh, they are the exactly the type fine as they, they're a really good endurance championship team. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. Th- those two drivers, like with 
you stick in like random Japanese guy you've never heard of, uh, and they've just won Le Mans. Yeah. Nick DeVries is doing um, Le Mans with Toyota this year, I believe, with, again, random Japanese Open top guy. car, yeah? No, no, yeah, I'm the prototype. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are big enough to get his head in. <laughs> <laughs> He's only about, like, four foot two, though, isn't he? So, you know. <laughs> a muscle back head. all heads. <laughs> Again, on the on the Nick de Vries drive to survive episode, there's a good bit of them turning up at the paddock in Monaco, and it's he's on the boat with um, with Adrian is, Newey is he sailing keel? into the harbour. Yeah, it's they have been to put six guys on the other side to yeah, <laughs> um, and um, you know that meme of the the guy in the glasses, like with his read like buff American bloke with the wrap round glasses, chatting really fiercely to the woman who's not interested. Oh yes. Or the nightclub one with the bloke who's showing into the ear and the woman just looks miserable. Yes. Mm. It's that where Nick DeFries is like, Oh yeah, we're gonna do great. Oh, we're gonna be brilliant. And there's just Adrian Newey sat there staring straight on going, You're sacked in two weeks. <laughs> I'm not listening to you. <laughs> it's fantastic. The only car of mine you're gonna drive is my Uber. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I mean, Nick DeVries might be a perfect fit for for Alpine just because, well, nobody would know. In that word, the endurance championship team we're talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He'll do well at Kia, Kia, Leicester North Branch. You know, <laughs> he'll be fine. He'll be grand. Mm. But yeah, go, going going back to Alpine, um, it's gonna it's gonna be a long year for them. I think that I think yeah. they're, this, they're this year's plummeters. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, I think they're, they're in serious mm -hmm. trouble. They're the ones that Williams, when they when they can get their act together, are going to start hassling. Because mm. I think I think that I think Alpine are kind of becoming um, they're doing what Williams did, you know, going from uh, going from podiums to propping up the grid. Mm -hmm. And Jordan, when they ran out of money, as well. Yeah, because that that was a that was a sudden drop. But the thing the thing is, it's a fucking it's works not team. it's it's a work yeah it, that's what I was about yeah. to say. It's a works team. You know they've got they've got the backing. They just I, I don't know. They just can they not be asked? I think the thing is they haven't got the backing. I think because when you look at their budget, they've still got one of the lower budgets. They've got they've they've got the lowest budget of the. Um, of works teams, obviously, hmm. but I, I'm I'm sure that, like the likes of McLaren and stuff like that have a have a higher operating budget than them. I'm going to guess um, Aston Martin have a, a higher budget. I I can't remember. I remember fi uh, reading how low their budget was, and it was like it was right down there with with exactly where the teams are hmm. that they're racing with. Um, I've just had the perfect idea for what to do with Alpine. Give them some more money. No, no. <laughs> write it in. Write it into the next Concord Agreement that the Enstone team has to change hands every four years between Renault and Honda, and then that way both of them can come back to Formula One and leave Formula One on a regular basis, and we don't get <laughs> the, the uncertainty. The prophecy is fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> because as soon as they join, you know they're going to leave uh -huh. for definite. It is true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it is I almost like with it. Alpine. It is almost like they think being a works team is enough and that they don't have to put anything else into it. Mm. They don't feel like a works team either, no. do they? No, not at all. Yeah, it's it's like I bought some Puma trainers. Why aren't I running as fast as Usain Bolt? Yes. Mm. At least when McLaren were crap, they were producing decent enough things behind the scenes to keep you interested in McLaren. I, you know, it's drama a mainly. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and you know the comedy of Alonso and Jensen getting up on the podium in Brazil mm. that time and GP two know, engine. They, yeah, it <laughs> it was fun, you know. But I, what is there that is again broken record has. What's marketable about Alpine at the moment? Nice blue car. Drivers hate each other. Mm. Deadpool. Uh, Taylor Swift's boyfriend. There's not much around it at the moment which interests anyone. Motivational speeches from Anthony Joshua on the uh, on the outlap. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. That was all good. I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> I enjoyed on... I saw the tweet the other day saying... Um, oh, it was yesterday saying, our first silverware of the season... 
Uh, congrats to our investor, Terence Trent Arnold, not Terence Trent Arnold, that's Terence Trent Derby, Trent Alexander <laughs> Arnold on winning the Carabao Cup. It's like, you're first or you're only? Also, they're not Silverware counting the season. Super Bowl there because. Oh, yeah, yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, does that mean the 49ers actually won it then? <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> Tell yourself that. I have been doing repeatedly. <laughs> Three times in the last 12 years. <laughs> so, yeah, so we think Al- Alpine are going to be um, dull. What do we reckon about um, Sauber Kickstake has? Um, <laughs> whatever. The Swiss mm. team. They're sort of also falling into that kind of forgetting that they exist space. I think they're going to be the surprise of the season. Oh, Good mm-hmm. surprise, it's bad surprise. Good surprise. Interesting. Well, Valtteri is going to mm-hmm. keep his clothes on. <laughs> but do you know what? I think that's the the only thing that's going to get in their way from a really good season might be their drivers. Mm. I was going to say his ass isn't that big. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you know what I, I can't I, I can't quite describe now either is like my I I, I don't want to say the word like visceral hate, but I don't have anything else to say uh, of quirky bot ass. Mm. Like, Quirky Bottas has worn so fucking thin on me. It feels very that, forced, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, I, like, oh, yeah. He, like, he looks like some sort of um, NASCAR meme 90% <laughs> of the time. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that car, that car is, you know, we know it's going to be an Audi. I think you're going to see the the beginnings of them dragging themselves together before the big takeover. Hmm. Um, again, they're a team which lacks a bit of ambition for me entirely in its driver lineup. See, the driver lineup's the problem. Like, yeah. I, I, I love the fact of what they've done with the car as far as like livery and stuff. I think, I think even just the idea that they, because they they were the first car to unveil, weren't they? And they had mm-hmm. like a proper launch, like a proper car launching. So, there's, I think there's clear ambition from that team. Is in like the the people that are in it, just maybe not in the hiring side of things. Yeah, I've said I've said it before. I think this is Bottas's last season. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think I think Joe will go first. I, he's for money though, isn't he? He's got, mm-hmm. he's bringing he's bringing money in. Will they need his money when Audi turn up with their money? No, this is why I think this is why I think Joe has got two more years, and then as soon as as soon as Audi are there. um... Oh, I've been scrolling on Bottas's Instagram for about thirty seconds, and I come across a picture of him with not many clothes on. There you go. Wasn't hard to find. Why is he Why is he cycling in speedos? He appears to be sponsored by Budgie Smuggler in that particular (laughs) post. Lee, I'm with you. Like I'm an with, insult. Lee, I'm with you on the quirky bot ass. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah like, I, I agree. It's getting boring. I, I, I mean, I know he, he he went through all that like mental health issues and stuff like that, but I just prefer some people when they're sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm just going to mute that tab. <laughs> I got a bing in my ear there for yeah, a second. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, that, that, that was Sean. Oh, God, were you sending the picture I've of Bottas and his budgie smugglers? I've sent smugglers? you Bottas and his budgie smugglers on a bike, Ooh, yes. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed um, reaction to that. Then. I, I reckon they could get rid of both of them next year and um, put in Sainz and Paul Chair. I think, oh, you see, if I, I think Sainz will go there. Um, but I think you'll get a year of science and bot ass first to keep some continuity. Yeah. No, I, th- I, I think I think we'll keep Joe because he's 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 bringing in the green, not just the one on the car. I, I don't I don't think it'll matter though with the because mm. you've you've got a co- you've got the cost cap in there. They've got sponsors now as well, you know, and none of those sponsors are like connected to Joe. Uh, Audi certainly doesn't want. Like won't want him and won't need his money. Uh, One of the things which will tell will be when we go to China in April, and the Chinese Grand Prix comes around. We'll see if it is is it Joe Mania or people don't give a crap. I think I think Joe will be took up, picked up somewhere else. I think he'll go to Haas if I'm honest. Yeah, Haas is a great but, show actually. Yeah, um, I think Haas are going to put get rid of Magnussen and probably put someone like Ollie Behrman in there. I think you could end up with a a, a Bottas 
um, Obata Science Partnership still in the first year of Audi. Mm. Because it, cause if, science, if science really performs, then Bottas, we, we know how good a number two Bottas is. Like the that that's the thing to, thing to remember is he's not he's not a bad driver. He's a really 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 good driver, but he needs he needs the car underneath him to do it. Yeah, and I mean maybe it's just maybe it's the like having somebody next to him performing like makes him perform better mm, as well, so or at least to the top of it. his. Yeah, I mean some drivers like Alonso, for instance. Um, I think he thrives without competition within his own team. Yeah, Whereas... he, yeah, he's number he's number one, and if there's anybody else there, half yeah. of it, half of his energy is spent doing the other driver down. Sebastian yeah. Sebastian Vettel as well. I think he's another one that thrived with a with a, a, a teammate he had like well in hand. Yeah, even yeah. Weber, Weber calling himself the number two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I, don't, I just I just don't know. Um, he's obviously wanting to prolong his career, mm. but <clears throat> it's, I think I he's think... better off parked elsewhere now. Mm. I think we're getting to the point where he will be at least. I think I think it's easy to forget how good Bottas is and was. Oh yeah, yeah, That's... definitely. It's it, it's like the Kimi Räikkönen thing again. Remember when Kimi Räikkönen was in Ferrari? Like, who could replace Kimi Räikkönen? It's Kimi Räikkönen. Mm. Um, I can't think if you is it, as long as you have a a really good star driver in. I don't know who else you, is on the grid that would be a better number two for somebody. Well, I I, I still I, I Bartas would be a. Um, he, he, he wouldn't be considered is considered now, but when they hired Perez for uh, Verstappen, Bottas would have been a good Red Bull driver for that seat. He'd have been a better better choice than Perez, definitely now. Yeah, mm. it's I guess there's sort of a strange. Well, but there was one year out, wasn't there? There was a year where Perez was at Red Bull and Bottas was at Mercedes, mm-hmm. but. I guess Red Bull were never going to poach someone like Bottas because you could say the same of maybe bringing back Danny Rick at that point instead of seeing him go off to McLaren. Um, yeah, yeah, but that obviously that deal was done pre or oh, during the pandemic, wasn't it? But um, mm. there's a lot to say for Kick Sauber Haas strike or uh, not Haas stake. Um, their car is funky. Um, I don't know if it's attractive, but it appeals to a, a part of me that likes neon green. Um, <laughs> and they've lost Ruth Buscombe, haven't they? Ruth Buscombe's left the team as well. So I'd say Ruth Buscombe is worth a lot of time in hand, given the quite interesting, not always successful, but clever strategies that would come up if one of them had a prang on turn one mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, no, apparently she's still there. Oh, I thought she'd left. God, I was certain of it. My bad. <laughs> um, sorry, Ruth, if you're a listener. What am I saying? You're not. <laughs> the, the, I, thing, the thing is, there aren't any more, uh, there aren't any more, any more Ferrari powered teams for us to go through because she's collected the full set now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the thing with um, Salva is they are simultaneously like the most boring and yet most interesting team on the grid because the you you kind of think yeah but they're just like woefully average right now but i get yeah i wouldn't be surprised if they're fighting for championships within a few years in the first year of audi yeah yeah i agree i mean you know we've thought about that before because i mean when the first came out Fre- uh, when Frenson was driving from they were pushing for podiums in the first couple of seasons like well, what mm-hmm. the hell what the hell's going on with these yeah. They are they are the ultimate F one nearly team because I mean, you know they brought Red Bull and Petronas into F one, and Mercedes engines, mm-hmm. and you know what what have they got to show for it? An aging Bottas and a bright green car. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, um... Yes, Ruth Buscombe has left them. Oh, she has? Yeah, oh. after eight years. Ah, nobody's updated uh, a Wikipedia say... page. I'm sitting on my on my pit wall for Alpha for the last time, uh, racing until the last checkered flag. Uh, thank you for your memories. Time for the next chapter, but doesn't say what that next chapter is. But yeah, I would I would say um, if I was there at Ferrari, throw all the money in the world at her and listen to every last little tiny bit of strategy she comes up with and fucking act on it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, <laughs> I'm surprised she doesn't do more for Ferrari. She did bits and pieces before she joined Alpha Sauber, whether they were called back then. I can't remember. It was just Sauber, wasn't it? I think I think it but, was just Sauber. Yeah, Ericsson Sauber, NASA Sauber, that sort of era. But um, yeah, the the Seb win in Malaysia, Ferrari. She orchestrated that. I think if I'm right in remembering. So um, his first Ferrari win. So she, I'm surprised that Ferrari don't just throw money at her and take her on because yeah. she's clearly her maybe hannah schmitz and james Fowles, you know they, they were great strategists mm-hmm. she's in the same league mm, definitely you know the ferrari strategy is th- you know, throw a dartboard see where it lands and um that's... do the opposite yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll do the opposite plan number to that um <laughs> What do we think? Um, I don't. What? I don't want to warn anybody about something impending, but Nick Knowles is trending on Twitter, and I can't see why because I'm blocked from him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will cool. investigate. <laughs> Cheers. What What do we think to Ferrari's chances this year? Because Just to say Nick Knowles is not trending for me, so you must Ooh. have a different setting. Hmm. He's trending alongside. Uh, the words Horner, Vettel, and goal of the season. Oh Christ! Oh my God. I just do not want to get involved with that. Oh, he appears to have been on the one show tonight. Oh, my God, he looks awful. He does look awful. Ooh. <laughs> he's he's oh, taken his Ann Middleton pills. Wow. <laughs> Fucking hell. Jesus Christ. Do you know what he looks like? He looks like sort of out-of-work Wolverine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, Simon Cowell, if he hadn't had the money to touch up his face a bit <laughs> and, you know, went down a dodgy path. I, I would say sort of even chubby a Ray Winston. Can we go back to Ferrari? Um, uh, just yes. quickly, I didn't realise the first the first tweet I saw of someone taking a picture of this was saying, like, when did Nick Knowles turn into <laughs> Brian Blessed? <laughs> uh, right, you need a Gordon's Alive on your soundboard, by the way. Just no, I haven't got it. Just, uh, just saying. Um, so yes, Ferrari. Um, interesting situation with science. Is he going to be team player this year, or is he just going to say stuff it? I'm doing my own thing. Because last time he said stuff it, I'm doing my own thing. He won. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it, he's now got nothing to lose in a sense, has he? Mm, he's in the shop window, hasn't he? He's got to try mm. and catch the eye. He's is... probably going to Audi, isn't he? Um, uh, uh, bold prediction. Mm. Uh, it will turn out to be the wrong choice to get rid of science for Lewis. But, Interesting. Um, the because uh, I, I, I keep thinking about this in my head of Lewis going to Ferrari, and I tell you what, science is going to get sick of this, isn't he? Like it, like the if every time someone mentions science in an interview or in like a pundit, like five words times they're going to say Lewis Hamilton after it. Um, <laughs> but the more I've thought about him in like McLaren and him in Mercedes, um, I don't think Lewis will adapt to like the Ferrari mentality of things. No, I mean we said we said this a couple of shows ago. Yeah, I reckon the most Ferrari thing possible would be there were sandbagging all the way through testing. The car is an absolute rocket on the straights. It's glued to the corners and still quick. Sites gets the most out of it. Wins the world championship by Hungary, <laughs> and all of a sudden Ferrari are looking incredibly stupid. How Ferrari is? How Ferrari would that be? <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. I think with Hamilton as well, it could go the other way where Hamilton gets on with the car really well, and then they have an unhappy Leclerc that they have fuck all to do with, and it was like, how do we get him to work? Oh, he's off, and 
Yeah, but Leclerc, yeah there's Leclerc, no number two in Leclerc, is there? Yeah, like, Leclerc, I don't think it's in his yeah. mindset. Leclerc yeah. signed up no. for the rest of his natural, hasn't exactly. he? Just about. So then so... they're stuck with someone who's shit and in a mood. <laughs> Plus firstborn, yeah. I think. Opposite <laughs> on the firstborn. Well, they've got his little brother, haven't they? They own him as well. well no, they've sacked him. Have they, have they've they got rid of our brother. Ah. Yeah, they got rid of they got him, rid of him during the off season, um, or as Arthur Leclerc called it, the season. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, he, they've ditched him, and I, I don't know. I can't. I, I'm surprised that they're going away a bit from Leclerc because Ferrari aren't the sort of team to number two a number one. But they did it a bit with Seb, but they knew Seb was going downhill quite quickly. Mm. Um, I don't think Leclerc's going downhill quickly. I think he's he's just not a champion. Mm. And if they're looking for an instant quick win, it doesn't surprise me. They've gone for Lewis, but having said that. I agree. They shouldn't have got rid of science. They should have stuck yeah. with science. I think this it's... works for Lewis and Lewis only. Yeah, it's the. Um, I think I can't. Uh, apart from maybe Jensen Button with Braun, like turn into Mercedes. I can't think of a more um, like undeserving sacking. Yeah. You know, like that's. Uh, I think. I think the. <laughs> Getting rid of your world champion, like to get Michael Schumacher into Mercedes, was a a terrible move. Like mm-hmm. it would it would turn out. Um, but yeah, I, I I feel bad for Sainz. I do because the what he lacks the one lap pace in the, that Leclerc has. But Leclerc has kind of just been Leclerc at Ferrari for a while, whereas. There has been this natural progress- progression of Carlos Sainz where he's got better every single race he's raced for that team. I just said um, Mercedes didn't sack Button. He um, he binned them off and um, actually rang Martin Whitmarsh and said, yeah, I'm available. I, <laughs> do you believe that? Probably I've, because I've, there I've were heard, talks going on with Schumacher. Yeah, and, yeah. I've, I've heard that as well. I think uh, I think he was given the, the option to like go, you know, it's a... We're probably going to go this way, so you might probably want to go somewhere else. Um, it's in his autobiography. I know, I know. I still don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, his autobiography is mainstream media. That's why. Yes, this is facts. <laughs> um, You've done your own research. But they, they was the thing was. I've never seen someone community note an autobiography before. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget like, that that Schumacher to Mercedes thing was happening. You know, it's because yeah. the he was you know, there was there was the rumors of coming back to Ferrari and Ross Braun essentially put the stoppers on Schumacher come back to Ferrari. And I uh, I think then when that was meant to happen, Braun had already ter- had essentially agreed terms with Schumacher. It was unfinished business, wasn't there? Yeah. That he wanted part of, and he was meant to come in when Massa did his eye in with the spring. Mm. Yeah, and didn't he fall off a motorbike or something? There was some kind bike. of lingering neck injury, wasn't there? Schumacher. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, but there was another thing I, I I'd heard as well from like Ross Braun in the interview turned around and said that he he said to Schumacher that coming back to Ferrari in such short short with short span wasn't the right thing because it was. Um, Apparently it was it was a real bitch to drive, wasn't it? That car, mm. as everyone else that got into it would would like mm. attest to 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 an extent. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm convinced Schumacher was was destined for that car before before the like Braun was anywhere near winning the championship. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Who were we talking about again? Ferrari. We were talking. We were talking about. We were talking about yeah. Ferrari, but it's kind of veered off on a tangent. Which kind of Ferrari? Ferrari Do we think thing. they're going to fight Red Bull? That's. I suppose that's the big one because no. they they seem to be the closest team right now to Red Bull. Yeah. They'll do their usual thing where they're sort of halfway competitive for about half a season, and then they'll just Ferrari it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think they're the second best team right now, and by the end of the season, they'll be the fourth best team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sec- second place. Yeah. Is, second place is theirs to lose before a wheel's even been turned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would be incredibly Ferrari, wouldn't it, if um, if if Leclerc gets done this year by science? 
I would love to see that. Like, I'd love to see Science finish this year like forty points ahead of Leclerc. And I think I think it'll it'll probably happen because, um, like we said before, what what Science got to lose, and he will call them out, mm-hmm. and they will they will get thing they will get things wrong at some point because sad sad to say it's what Ferrari do, mm. but. On the plus side, they are the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it might. I think it might work well for science if um, I don't see him going back to Red Bull and taking that Red Bull seat. And I know that's been sort of rumored, but that uh, if he can go to Audi and Audi do what we think they're going to do, he's essentially he's trying the Jensen Button method of winning a world championship. Possibly, yeah. I mean, everybody's been linked with the um, with the second Red Bull. Our cats have been linked with the second Red Bull. <laughs> mm. Have you had any comment on that? Um, yeah, they, <laughs> meow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Diz, Dizzy was strangely quiet on it. Dis, decided not to uh, decided not to mention it, but she did prefer them when they were Jaguar. Hey, <laughs> He's a, I'm not go. I'm not going to do it. Go on. <sighs> <laughs> it's better when there's a delay <laughs> <laughs> and a when reserved you sign. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, no, my finger slipped. Uh, oh, what a, oh, I can't believe the luck. <laughs> um, let's let's move on to Aston Martin. Um, Alonso's going to be better. What? So be- McLaren. Be- Alonso's going to be better than last year. Well, <laughs> this is a bit of a dead year for Alonso, isn't it? Christ, no! I mean, he's you know he's already put himself in the shop window before testing, mm-hmm. because he's saying that he's going to make every team want him because he's in a strong position. I think every team's going to want him anyway. <laughs> he could go up there and get out of the car on the first race and start you know pick up a cootie guitar and start covering stereophonics tracks, and they'll go brilliant. Sign him up. <laughs> <laughs> he could do whatever he wants. Someone's going to pick up Alonso in twenty twenty five, and yeah. that's someone I think it's going to be Mercedes. Mm. I've gone back on my original prediction of Sergio Perez. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it, I think it'll be interesting to see what Aston do this year mm-hmm. because. Mm. They learned very quickly, um, don't front load all your development because they really did fall off. Mm. Well, I think the other thing is they didn't expect to be where they were at the beginning of the season. I think it was an embarrassment of riches. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but I mean, as soon as they opened the um, their new technology centre, that's when they started going downhill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I think it is going to depend for Alonso, isn't it? Because it's it's a big call. Because again, the the amount of investment that's going into that team, I, I that's that can't be a team that stands still, mm. because there's too much money on the line mm. for that to happen. I don't believe that Lawrence Stroll is going to um, like just sell up the team. I've like I I, I can't help but feel now that. Um, Lawrence Stroll got into Formula One because of his son, but now his son's still in Formula One because of his dad, and I, I think I think the dad is going to stay in Formula One longer than the son. Mm. I yeah. I just think these are the most likely ones to become Andretti. Interesting. Oh, I don't I don't know I don't know about that. Could would Andretti be willing to put that type of money in? Andre- They've got that type of money, Andretti were they? willing yeah. to um, put more than Aston Martin's worth into just the um, dilution fund, as well as all the money that they that they were ready to put into building their own team. Right. So I don't. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Think I don't the think money's Aston an object. Sale. That's the thing. Lawrence Lawrence Stroll is a businessman. And he mm. knows that everything has a price. And if if Andretti were to come to him with the right amount, you wouldn't see him for dust. I don't. 
I probably, don't know. Probably, because, I, probably because Lance has spun it in a gravel trap and he was standing behind him at the time. I, I don't believe if you're... Like, I get the idea of like, investing in a team if you've got all that money like that, but with my investment comes my son. I get that. Um, I get pumping a bit more money into that team to try and make the car a bit more competitive. But like what Lawrence Stroll has done, like he's bought a Formula One team. He then bought a car manufacturer because he wanted to brand that team. Then he went and invested in like the most sophisticated uh, technology center for uh, that a Formula One team will have. You know, once that's all online, they are the benchmark of facilities for Formula for a Formula One team. And that will show the price that every Formula One team in the future needs to be sold for. Yeah, but the pro- the thing is, I think I think if you're if you're questioning whether you want to stay in Formula One or not, I don't think you're putting that sort of investment in. Well, I, th- I, th- I think he is because he will get one hell of a return on his investment. Because don't forget, he got the um, he picked up the team at the lowest at their lowest point. Mm-hmm. Uh, Formula One teams with the restrictive practices of oh, yeah, not letting like anyone the, new in you know the, all the 10 yeah. teams are now worth considerably more than the were this time five years ago i just mm. i just think if he was going to sell it it would have been Haas. if he was going to sell it it would that's how he would have treated it if it was like Haas has treated that team like an investment whereas G, whereas lawrence stroll has treated that team for five years time uh I'm I'm not convinced. I think I think he's putting the money in to increase the return that he'll get. And I I think they are the most likely to become Andretti. You know, you look at the Formula One yearbook and they've all got the quotes underneath. Yeah. Oh, so do you think they're the they're more likely than Alpine? Um yeah, I do. I do. I think so. Um Alpine will end up being Bought by bought out fully by Redbird Capital, and it'll be the second time that Enstone's been owned by a venture capital team, mm-hmm. because Genie Capital owned, yeah, that version of Lotus. Um, I don't think Gene Haas will. I don't think Gene Haas will sell while his machine tools profits are up. <laughs> and I think if you know if Andretti wants to buy the way in, they will offer Lawrence Stroll an absolutely stupid amount of money. And there'll be some there'll be some deal where Aston Martin road cars switch from having Mercedes engines to having General Motors engines. I think. Well, you're... they're going to Honda, though, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. They have a deal with Honda from twenty twenty six onwards. They do. Mm, for now, Aston Aston Martin do. If Andretti had bought them by then, it does mm. make Alpine <clears throat> the easier team to buy. They're probably going to mm. be cheaper. They're probably going to be looking to sell. They've not got this weird contract that's going to. Mm. I, I, the other thing I, I'd say is, it, um, but you've got more. You've got more shareholders to negotiate with. You have, but I, 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 I think you're discounting how much Lawrence Stroll enjoys owning a Formula One team. That was going to be my next point. Mm. He looks. He, I mean, they drive to survive, making out full Bond villain, but he does genuinely show a wanton passion for being top dog. Well, he's he's been, I mean he's been through the whole thing. He's obviously been. Uh, your son doesn't become a form uh, form uh, like a motor racer and a Formula One driver if his father isn't interested in motorsport. So like Lawrence Stroll has clearly had like a keen invol a, a, like a keen eye on for on motorsport, probably Formula One, like most of his life. He's then had a son, which has got into mo- into uh, into motorsport. Let's we, we won't lie; he hasn't struggled in doing so, but he's still been there. You know, he's been there for the. When you look at the uh, junior career Stroll had, you know, there, there was a lot of there, there was there was a lot of winning going on. Um, so he's been part of that, and. I, I I don't think you can I don't think you can do that without loving something you know and, and when you're when you've got the money Lawrence Stroll has got where else do you get your kicks <laughs> do you know what I mean like this you've got to do something partying if, with Flavio but that's it if, if you if, if, <laughs> like if you're if you've got that much money you need a fucking extreme hobby 
and Can't. teeing with Flavio. Right. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> what, 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 what are you going to do? I'm going to buy a Formula One team and I'm going to do everything it takes to win a championship with it. Yeah. That's one hell of a hangover. Yeah. <laughs> but if you if you have a billion dollars, you, you're probably willing to chuck several dinero into this project, mm-hmm. aren't you? Yeah, and I think he's got enough dinero to chuck into this. Mm. You know, in 2016, half of the F3 field dropped out because they knew Lawrence Stroll would buy his way to the championship with Lance, and thus that happened. Mm. This isn't his first rodeo. He, Do you know the funny he will thing is, put the money in. If um, if Lance Stroll wasn't, and he's not, you see, the thing is, he's not even a bad Formula One driver. He's just like an average, it's not a good one. Yeah, mm. and probably, yeah, he's better. It, he's better than Luca Badoa. Yeah, if but if it wasn't for if it wasn't for his father, he obviously wouldn't be in Formula One. No, but if you take Lance Stroll out of the equation, and Lawrence Stroll comes in, buys a Formula One team, uh, rebrands Austin Martin, put starts putting all this. Uh, Money into infrastructure, hires uh, Sebastian Vettel, that doesn't work out, hires Fernando Alonso, that really does work out. Um, Lawrence Stroll is a king in Formula One at that point, and I bet everybody would love him for, for what he's done for, for Formula One and motorsport in general. The only reason we give him any flack is because he's given his son a drive as well. Mm hmm. That's why I'm voting Lawrence Stroll. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I would be the point at which you would know that he's all in if at some point he gets rid of Lance for being a bit shit. That's yeah. it. That, that is the defining line, isn't it? Mm. How loyal is he to his son? Full on succession style vibe to this, but how loyal is he to his son compared to the brand? And What's th- more important? And I think Formula he... One <clears throat> or Lance? Mm-hmm. And I think if he gets rid of him from the F1 team, he will find him, Lance will find himself in a works Aston Martin hypercar. I mean, the Val- I think you'll know, find himself in the Val- a the Val- pub Val- darts team. The, Val- <laughs> the Valkyrie's coming. <laughs> the Val- yeah, that's true. There is, there is a succession plan for Lance Stroll if he doesn't want to be in Formula One. Rather, if the board don't want him in Formula One anymore. L- Lance Stroll cost Aston Martin at minimum fourth in the constructors last year, potentially third, potentially second. That was Lance who cost them that. Mm. At that point, if you turn around to the board and said, well, in a sport where 100% is Red Bull and we were able to achieve achieve 90%, we achieved 60. Why? Because of your son. At Mm. that point, you you got to look somewhere else. And I don't think Yuki Tsunoda's the answer. I think maybe Alex Albon's the answer. But if they're looking at Yuki Tsunoda for 2025, you, you might not be getting an upgrade. But flip a coin, because Lance Stroll is not going to be the person who will get you second in the championship. Yeah. Um, coincidentally, the um, Valkyrie is due to make its WEC and IMSA debut in 2025. Uh-huh. Oh, that's good timing. Mm. 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 So, so yes, yeah. could could we see could we see Lance as the team's marquee driver? Although everybody else gets faster times and does more laps. <laughs> um, <laughs> who haven't we done? We talked about we talked about Lando it's being uh, being depressed. Oh yeah. Um, apparently, McLaren are struggling with tires again. When aren't McLaren struggling at the start of the season? Mm. Um, nineteen ninety nine. I feel like there was a question fair, mark. Though, there was a question mark on that last night. There. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair to McLaren, regardless, because I think the the only thing they're probably upset about with with is not being second best team. If they are, maybe with Mercedes behind Ferrari, it is the best position. McLaren have been at the beginning of a season for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. when you can, when you look how they developed their way out of problems last year, I think that's if if they can if they can develop that way this year, 
they can really be hassling Red Bull by by at some point this year. Don't look from mm. at the start of the season. Don't we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> There was one year, Lee, where you predicted that McLaren were going to be third in the championship, and there was a round of laughter. And I think you were right. I think they were third. Was that 2019 <laughs> or 2020? Oh, all right, super fan. Yeah, well, I mean, I, <laughs> you know, I could have taken three legs, four wheels on Mastermind. <laughs> you know I could have done. <laughs> Question one At what festival did Chris, uh, Hulk Hogan, that's correct. <laughs> Question two. Paul and Sean's cat are uh, dizzy. That's bloody hell, that's correct. And the, and the, and the other one? Uh, Rascal. <laughs> Le- Leonard. <laughs> and you were Leonard. Leonard. Oh, dizzy and... He's uh, looking at me. The other one. The yeah. other one. <laughs> the one that Sean's currently having their fight with. Yes. Bruno. Bruno. Behave Bruno! Yourself. Oh, you... Always looking Idiot. grumpy. Oh. Are we going to have to have a super you. fan off between you and Jamie from last week? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got a message from Jamie saying he couldn't believe he finally got to got a chance to be uh, involved in a three legs, four wheels tangent. <laughs> <laughs> I still find it hard to believe we do that every week. Um, <laughs> moving, moving up the team, the team that's possibly tying McLaren for third, though, um, Mercedes. Another one mm. where it's going to be a strange year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, good good to see the full time return of side pods. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the car just didn't... in time for Red Bull to zero pod. <laughs> yeah. <in the> <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a strange strange year for Mercedes. Again, do they throw everything behind Russell? Do they try and give Lewis one last? Um, one last hurrah with the team. They have to throw everything behind Russell, don't they? Mm-hmm. The, yeah, yeah. Ju- ju- just because of the, um, the, like they they can't have Hamilton knowing what's going on with next year's car, so they mm-hmm. they just de facto have to like work with Russell more. Mm. From the looks of things, from the um, from what they did in testing, it's also very hard to. Um... Get an idea of what Mercedes are like because they were only doing ten um, ten lap runs on full fuel. Mm. Yeah, what was with that? Why did they not do anything longer than a twenty lap stint? Maybe they really can't work the tires. It could be. I think if they can't make tires last twenty laps, that's a problem. Yeah. Um. The only thing I'd say about that is that there didn't seem to be any negativity coming out of them. No, which is kind of a hopeful thing, but I, I don't think Lewis would keep any what would keep any embarrassment from them after he's already like uh, you know he's he's already left before the season starts. Yeah. Starts, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still d- find it wild, you know. You know when you see pictures of Lewis in like the mock-up overalls, mm, it mm. looks so wrong. Yeah, it's mm. it's it, it's so wild that you know it's that felt like. Um, that felt like one of those things that when Lewis retires, it would have been like, oh, you know, we never did go to Ferrari. You know, but it's 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 one of those conversations that usually happen after somebody's retired, but we're actually going to see it work. Yeah, now it's just going to be, oh, we never saw him in a Red Bull. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that's all a bit mad, isn't it? Because you're back gone forever at that point. Oh, but what could Lewis have done in Masalba? <laughs> <laughs> there's just there's just something a bit different with uh, Ferrari, isn't there? Yeah, you know, it's, I, I, it's I imagine, a different I, culture. Yeah, they were. I think the um, the only one I would think think matches it would be like Fernando if he doesn't get a like in in this sort of twilight like high point of his career if he doesn't actually get a race winning car. Before he retires, you know that that's another one of those what if... conversations we'll have after. I, he's gone, I don't. Yeah. I think he'll want to carry on um, racing until he actually gets another race winning car. I, th- I think you're right. I th- the thing's going to be is like when when will his body give up on him? 
Like, when will he... <laughs> like, when will it go, look, I'm sorry, Fernando, your brain has got the tents in it, but my, your body is broken and frail. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you make him sound like he's older than me and more falling apart than me. <laughs> No, look, the guy is clearly... Both of those things take some doing before anyone says anything. (laughs) I just haven't seen your hat and sunglasses collection, Paul. That's the problem. (laughs) (laughs) When we hit that quote-unquote era, I'm well in. I was here. I I mean, the guy's clearly like a a full-on super athlete, you know, but it's just how... How how long does it go for? But how... I mean, I, I know I've said on this podcast... Like multiple times, I think one of the worst things that happened to to Formula One. I, this this is going to be taken wrong, but I don't because I, I because it's not like one of the worst things. But Pop, popcorn on uh, your body? No, when when no no no, there's nothing. It's, it's, there's nothing. There's nothing bad about it. I'm I'm not going to say. It. The, the problem is we need more X type of drivers. Now, um, the. Uh, Vettel coming in and doing really well from a young age, Vettel really kicked off the youth movement in Formula mm. One, yeah. where every team was looking for that young superstar driver to put in their team. Whereas before that, it had been drivers coming into Formula One with a um, older and then having a shorter career. So you had quite higher, you had a higher turnover of drivers because people were coming in. Late, like, was it? Wasn't um, I mean, Damon Hill was well into his 30s when, yeah, uh, 36, I think he was when he came into Formula One, wasn't he? Yeah, 32. Yeah. His th- 36 he? won his title, right? Okay, I knew, I knew it was, I knew that was <laughs> like uh, an important number, late, yeah. Um, but I think that's you know, it, it kind of screwed the uh. A, a like a generation of drivers. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of th- think of his name. Like, we'll definitely we'll stick Gary Paffett in that. Um, there was someone else I'm trying to think of as well, and I can't remember who who should have been in Formula One. But I think like, Gary Paffett uh, is still doing young driver tests. Somewhere. Yes, which is <laughs> wild. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, you look at Mansell. He was 27 when he started. Although I'm convinced he was born aged 40. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> but it just it, it just makes me wonder whether there's, there's drivers that could have stayed on in Formula One for longer, but either weren't given the opportunity or didn't have the like the drive and motivation to do it as long as Fernando has done, and that's give us this um false ceiling of where we think a drive where we think a driver can drive a Formula One car t- to top level. You know, it's at the we we just kind of automatically think, oh well, if you stick Fernando in the in with Max Verstappen, Max Verstappen would win because he's younger. Mm. And I'm not I'm not convinced anymore that that's actually true. That age makes that huge of a difference in Formula One. Yeah, Will Buxton has this amazing thing that he talks about quite often in interviews and stuff where he says about the day does he, that... does he say does he spread his words out and leave like loads of gaps in the middle of it to make it <laughs> like, take longer when he says it yeah he's paid by the minute our buxton <laughs> um he's the day that sebastian vettel won in the toro rosso at monzo in 2008 pause um <laughs> giorgio pantano won the f2 championship and i don't know if this is a, a laugh effect now or if my internet's died um he won the f2 or the gp2 championship back in 2008 the same day so and th- this whole thing about our oh, experience is a dirty word but there's the effect that that didn't get a fanfare whatsoever because seb came in at age six and won the monza grand prix that year mm-hmm and therefore, everyone forgot about Giorgio Pantano coming, going into Formula One. I think it was, was it Williams or Jaguar? He failed. He failed somewhere. Minardi. Uh, Jordan. And then he, Jordan. That was it, of course, one of the dying Jordans. And then he went back to GP2, a bit like Grosjean did. He went right, okay, get the act together, win the championship. I'm back, guys. Hey, Sebastian Vettel. Hey, what are you doing? Your toss Get out of the way. We're bringing Seb through. And that was it. That was the end of Giorgio Pantano's career in F1, basically, because he wasn't the headline. 
mm. experience didn't work for him. But it didn't make him any worse a driver. The only the only time this analogy breaks down is Nick DeFries, in recent times anyway, is Nick DeFries. And maybe Brendan Hartley. Yeah, Brendan Hartley would be the the one that would stand out for me, I think. Here's the benchmark mm. of experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Put Gary Paffett in that McLaren. He'd have two <laughs> seconds on Lando. <laughs> <laughs> and talking of other cars that love two seconds on Lando, that just leads Red Bull. Hey! hey. Um, I, they, I aren't just just quickly. We forgot we forgot about poor Oscar there. That's true. Actually, yeah, we haven't oh, yeah. talked about Oscar. At all. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> last last year was the most improved driver in the most improved team. Mm. Do we have I mean, many listeners in Australia? Quite a few. Quite a few. Mm. Can we say he's the most improved driver since it was his rookie season? So we didn't have a benchmark for him. I mean, he was. Things weren't going great for him at the start. But then was then he, he was getting used to driving a bad car, mm-hmm. and I think as the car improved, he got his he got his confidence up, and I think his his performance was better um, exponentially because mm. the car was the car was getting better, and so was he. So you know he he came a long way from the. Cause after about three or four races at the start of last season, everyone was like, "Oh God, all that fuss, and is he worth it?" He'd had at least one. I mean, his first race was a mechanical issue. Yeah, mm. I can't. I can't remember him being under any significant no. scrutiny. I think. I think Nick DeVries took a lot of the heat off it. <laughs> but I, I thought. I thought he did. Like com- compared to Lando, I thought he did mm. reasonably well. Yeah, I don't from, remember like... there ever being any sort of like, oh God, what's this? He had one bad race in Austria. I want to say where he was battling seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth mm. when he shouldn't have been. Yeah, I, I, as a, as a um, Orlando fanboy, he does. I, I, he worries me slightly, Oscar. That like, you know, <laughs> he'll he'll just click in gear, and you go, oh, hang on a second. Like, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind taking like four tenths back, that'd be great. The good news is, even if Oscar is Lando spec twenty nineteen, we've got Lando spec twenty twenty four now. Yeah, mm, so yeah. He, he's always a few steps ahead. As speaking as someone who doesn't particularly prefer either driver, apart from Lando, um, I think that we're in a better position as Lando fans um, than were it three years ago. Mm. I think if you put Sainz in that McLaren now, Lando might tip him. And then... uh, oh, yeah, no, I, I think so. I think Lando's, Lando's sort of surpassed, surpassed Sainz. Uh, like, Sainz appears to be... I I, th- I think he's one of those one of those drivers that could win a championship in the right position, but I think he's kind of at his ceiling now, where I don't think Lando's hit his ceiling yet. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be interested to see what Piastri is going to be like this year. Ec- most exciting driver lineup on the grid, I think, McLaren. Yeah. yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think they've you know they've got the um, they've got the ability, and they seem, they seem to work well together as well. Mm-hmm. You know the clicking of the e sig case is very loud. Okay, I'll stop doing it. <laughs> did, did I tell you the interview with Piastri when he when he became like one of my favourite drivers of all time? No, no. Um, he was the they they were in he was in an interview being asked about what what was going to happen the um, in the coming season and stuff like that. How he was feeling. This was before testing, and then um, it's for, for no apparent reason. The interviewer started talking about Lewis Hamilton, and they they said, "Oh, you know, I, I think they might have loosely linked it because he was a McLaren driver." And they said, "Oh, well, obviously, you know, they, you've got uh, Lewis there. With, like, wouldn't it be amazing if um, Lewis was to win a race after? Like, was it, is it two years now since Lewis has won a race? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, after yeah. Since, since Lewis last won a race, Max has won three championships. Wow, the." Um, the yeah, so they said, w- w- wouldn't it be amazing if Lewis won a race uh, after not winning one for t- for a couple of years? And he sort of looks at it and said, "Why would I find it amazing that the most successful driver in Formula One wins another race?" <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't fault him. 
<laughs> but it was just, it was just, it was just dispatched. Is it like he might as well have ended that? And he said, anyway, back to me. <laughs> <laughs> so onto the um, onto the team that topped the timesheets with no surprises, or certainly at the start when they were pushing. Um, Apparently, Verstappen's margin over Lando on day one was the biggest gap since um, Jensen Button was faster than Mark Webber at testing in Jerez in 2013. 1.14 seconds. Mm. And then Red Bull appeared to sandbag for the rest of the time. They were uh, running the engine in a lower mode. Or mm. did they just put some fuel in it? I, I don't know. I did think they were going to try and Grand Chelem the uh, testing <laughs> <laughs> week, which is impressive. Mm. Just take all, all six sessions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's no doubt. Like, there's no doubt that that car's a good car. Um, you know, I, 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 I want to be the first to congr- congratulate Max on his uh, fourth championship this season. <laughs> I'd wait, I'd like, because because didn't they had they had some technical problems, didn't they? Like some reliability issues. Unusual. To Breaks, see, like, wasn't it? Yeah, unusual to see reliability issues. It are from a Red Bull t- car, um, you know, because they've been the, they've been a team that out there like pounding laps in now for a while. There's so been I, a couple of years where they have had reliability issues in the first couple of races, and then they go like 2022, mm. 2009. Well, I say reliability issues in 2009. I think Vettel hit a few bits in one race, and then spun out in the rain in the yeah. next. Mm. To to be fair, that you did just jump from twenty twenty two to two thousand nine. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, not, it's I, not a big issue. I is feel it? indirectly <laughs> proven my point here. I... <laughs> <laughs> they so, might have been good for a decade. So one, so once every two to fifteen years, they have an issue. <laughs> yeah. Bring on twenty thirty five. Um. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've 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 just still got hope. It, I've I've got hope we'll get a championship this year. Usually, when it's the last year before another rule change, like we get a good year, don't we? It's usually mm-hmm. that's usually the year you get a close championship. So that'll be next year then. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all this talk about loose guns, Ferrari. Isn't it? We're just cancelling. <laughs> Cancelling this Great year out, yeah. yeah. Anyone doing anything nice this year? <laughs> not, not watching F1 because it's not happening. No. <laughs> Free up my Sundays. Yeah. And Saturdays. Um, and Saturdays and two Saturdays. Um, I think if we do get a title challenge this year, it comes from Lando. And not Leclerc, not Lewis. I wouldn't count Mercedes <laughs> out. I did my um, annual preview with a um, friend of the show, Danny O'Brien, on his um, radio show in, in oh, Ireland yeah. this week. And I said, my bold prediction for this year is we will see a McLaren win. Intriguing. I, that might I, not be the boldest prediction in the world in the end. That mm. might be a very good prediction. And I went, I, I, I hedged my bets and said either in a sprint or a full Grand Prix. Mm. We, mm. Saw one la- we saw one last year. In the sprint. In a yeah. sprint. Yeah. I think they can go one better. Yeah, it's funny how we don't consider it like with the pe- people were worried that the, the sprint would dilute the Grand Prix. We absolutely do not consider a sprint a win. No. <laughs> <laughs> what are the what are the sprint races this year? Uh... A disappointment usually. Austria. <laughs> Ooh, spicy. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, th- I, think uh, I think there's one in China. Ooh. Oh, yeah, China, they're doing a sprint, aren't they? Yeah, two, uh, two early starts on consecutive yeah. mornings. That's 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 going to yeah. be a barrel of fun. E- even worse than that, it's... Oh, no, no. It's going to be a really early start in China because they're doing the format where it's qualifying on Friday, then sprint Saturday morning, qualifying Saturday afternoon. So the sprint race in China is going to be UK time, I should say, GMT, 3 or 4 a.m. Oh. Right. <laughs> Does Did I maths there? I think I mathsed. Uh, Chinese Grand Prix times. If only ever we did some 
research before we actually hit. We're doing. No, we're doing it no, now. That would. That would not be good. I don't think. You, the you, Chinese. You uh, yeah, it is four a.m. But... Uh, mm-hmm. Four a.m. for a sprint, and then qualifying at eight. Oh, and then uh... race on Sunday at eight. Oh, Joe, you know, like I mean, I don't mind getting up early in the morning to watch Grand Prix. Uh, like six o'clock, I think it's fine. Love, love getting up early to watch races. But the problem with the four o'clock sprint race is mm-hmm. you can't watch. The, it's not like you can. There should be a deal, shouldn't there? There should be a deal that in qualifying, nobody gives spoilers about the sprint race. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, pre- just pretend it like treat it like the last season of Lost. Like, just, <laughs> but... <laughs> but like there'll be someone there'll be you can guarantee if you tr- if you don't watch the sprint and then you watch qualifying even if they don't give spoilers there'll be someone who's crashed so then they're not in qualifying because their cars why, 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 why isn't Sonoda there yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. what could have possibly happened <gasps> oh my god it's that weekend it's the 20 20- okay so I I get to see the sprint Grand Prix live because the night before I'm on a stag do that weekend, and the night before, on the Isle of Wight, I have to say, we're seeing Goldie looking chain. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so I'll just stumble home from that. Yes. Straight into sprint qual- is sprint race. Do you know, uh, Nailed it. chain fact, mm. I refused to give the Manx member of Goldie looking chain my t shirt with the three legs of man on. Um, I'm sorry, there's but... a Manx member of Goldie looking <laughs> yeah. chain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he he saw me when we were from the stage. I might add uh, at, at Glastonbury, and he came off to try and essentially bargain bargain with me to take my three legs of man t shirt off me. To which point I was like, "Yeah, but that would mean I'm not wearing a t shirt." <laughs> <laughs> th- I think that 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 counts as a name drop. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, uh. That would have worked. Oh, get out. <laughs> I was too did, busy on going looking chains. Um, to the mention my page. To the mention my other podcast, I had Keemstar on the other day. Oh God, I can't find the bloody thing now. <laughs> <laughs> you you no. get a low rent this as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry, actually I've got I've got one Bella. You cannot be serious. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean that that would leave him with two t-shirts and no t- you no t-shirts. Yeah, was he so was he offering sense. a t-shirt swap at all? I I think it might be sort of mentioned, but like I mean, <laughs> he was like I I would say a small to medium, and uh-huh. I was definitely an extra large. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, but but that's fine for a rapper. He could have wore whatever size t-shirt he wanted and still fit in with the aesthetic of what they were going for. Uh-huh. If I did the same, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Right. Um, it is the Bahrain Grand Prix this weekend. It is the start of the season. And, of course, with a new season, brings the Prediction League. Um, we had it pointed out to us that we didn't actually give the results of last year's. So, <laughs> gladly, I'd just like to add to this. <laughs> yeah, so from my we, own count. Yeah, so we kind of gave up halfway through for the um, podcast predictions, but we are going to be bringing those back, and we'll sort those out offline and put them on the website. <laughs> oh. But uh, how, how odd of us forgive to give up halfway through a Formula One season? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Ferrari of prediction leagues. <laughs> However, um, how many people actually took part in the full prediction league? One hundred and thirty-six people took part in the full prediction league last season on the website, and there was a top three who were, uh, in third place, uh, Gennady Spirin, or Carty G, as he is on Discord, because um, he goes go-karting. Okay. Uh, another <laughs> member of the FC Motorsports team. Regular listener Jeff Leobold in second. He should have called himself Cartrati Kid. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll change his name on the Discord server now. And um, <laughs> winning the Prediction League, and unfortunately no prizes, because we still haven't found a sponsor for that. So anyone who wants to sponsor it and provide prizes, let us know. Uh, but the 2023 winner was Ro- uh, Roberto Moraes Jr. So if you want to uh, if you want to beat these people, just go to threelegsfourwheels.com and go to the game section, 2024 20, Prediction League's up there. 
predict the top five fastest lap pole position if you um, get your prediction in before qualifying starts. Will there be a safety car and correct number of DNFs? And that is going to be up for every race this season. We will sort our own predictions out. Mm-hmm. And then... Nope, don't move, no, don't move your no, leg. The cable. That's, that's the dodgy cable. It now sounds like it's raining. Mm. Are we going to do our predictions now? Hang on. I, I predict this the cable is going in the bin straight after this podcast. There's a the prediction. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. That's it's... made it worse. It has. Okay. Right, I'm now not plugged in. Yeah, so Paul has now unplugged the cable. <laughs> Now, we've plugged now I've cable. plugged it back in. It's kind of working, and if I don't move, everything should be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be uh, going on Amazon after we finish the show. Yeah. Uh, uh, the fact that it just sounded like you ran across the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, predictions for this weekend. Um, who do you think is going to come second and third? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will go Verstappen win, Russell second, Perez third. Uh, I'm going to go Verstappen win, uh, Sainz second, and Russell third. I'm going to go for, just look up what I put up on the website earlier. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go for, I've pre-done this, uh, Max win, Leclerc second, Lando third. Is that what you put on the site? <laughs> uh, let's have a look. It is, yeah. Yes, it, yes, it, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Right. Please. Perez win. <laughs> You've been drinking. <laughs> I'm just, there was like a delay in my head there. <laughs> <laughs> Perez win. Um, science third. You know, he's really thinking about this. <laughs> this, is, this is jazz. You've Flat. gone third before second. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a flat pack prediction. Signed <laughs> second, Lando third. Right. <laughs> I mean, you, have, you ever seen his band when he counts a song in? Four, one, three, two. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> on, on the prediction league so far, for mm. the other people who've wackily put in predictions on Monday, I want to give a shout out to David Roebuck, who has gone five DNFs, a, a Leclerc pole, and a Hamilton win. Wow, is this... <laughs> Bold. It sounds like a good race, that. That sounds quite entertaining. That, that's it. Me and him are just making 401 fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real predictions. And talking of Formula One fan fiction, if you want to hear some, then just subscribe to Patreon. Um, every, everything that you um, subscribe goes to the show, and it does things like pays for Mike stands. And was that a cat was, falling out of a litter was tray? That, was that our so... dear Leonard? <laughs> I'm laughing too much to explain what that was. So that was Dizzy <laughs> coming out with the litter tray and like thump of the rabbiting the side of the litter tray for some fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cracked me up. I'm not. <laughs> uh, just, just go to patreon.com slash three like small wheels and we'll get a better mic cable that doesn't have cats in it. <laughs> Um, also, if um, you want to do the official F1 fantasy uh, fantasy game, we've got a league this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to make sure that they've actually approved it. Um, Is that the official one, or are we doing the um, drive, whatever it is? Uh, no, it's the uh, it's the official one. Um, cool. We've got 21, 21 teams in it so far, so... Um, if you just search for Three Legs Four Wheels Podcast League on the F1 Fantasy website or app, um, join the league. Again, don't have prizes. Don't have prizes for that. Looking for sponsors? No, you're not. And Dizzy isn't, Dizzy isn't a sponsor. <laughs> no. With a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you do this? Why are you quiet and well behaved until like right at the end? And then just a menace. <laughs> because she wants to be a total shunt. Um, if you want to get hold of us then uh, obviously website 3legs4wheels.com 3legs4wheels at gmail.com and at 3legs4wheels on the uh, socials and individually we are at Sean Cowper at Kieran is boring 
at the Lee Stevens and at Pablo One Hundred and Flood is at Flood Twenty One and not here tonight. He did say it was only fifty fifty whether he'd be here. Um, right, we're going to bugger off. Uh, don't forget the race. Well, everything over the weekend is a day early, so it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, we'll still be back to do another show next Monday because we're set in our ways like that. And <laughs> Saudi, with a preview of Saudi Arabia, which is also on a Saturday. So uh, we will uh, we will see you next week. All right, bye there's, bye. There's a ton of people missing that first race, isn't there? Oh, there is. Oh yeah. Oh, there is. There is. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you next week, or we'll see you next week and one day. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. 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 bye.